Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, 8744. And today, guys, we do my community QA, guys. So thank you guys for sending your guys' questions. And you guys seem to really like this. So I think we'll do this as a regular edition, guys. So let me know how you guys feel about your questions being answered and whether you guys agree with my responses, man. Whether you guys agree. Like I said, guys, it's just for fun and all. So don't take it too personally. Let's start with the first question we got here from Tari Joe Otoma says, What are your biggest what ifs related to Barcelona United States? Okay, let's start with Barca. What if we won that trouble in 2018? Because here's the thing, guys. That might be the closest time Barca had to a trouble. We could have won three trophies that year in 2019. Uh, obviously, that and also 2011 also comes to mind. But I think this one was such a bigger missed opportunity because I'm almost positive that we didn't bottle it against Liverpool. We would have beat Spurs in that final. And I'm confident that because we lost to Liverpool, or we were mentally down for the game against Valencia. That's why we lost that game. Otherwise, we would have beaten Valencia. And also, so yeah, those are my, probably my two biggest what-ifs for Barca. Like, what if he won the treble in 2011? Because I think we lost the COVID array final that year. And 2019. I think for the United States, my biggest what-if is, what if we made it to the World Cup 2002 semifinals? Because in my opinion, we were robbed against Germany. That goal should have stood for us. And we should we could have played against South Korea. And potentially, we could have played against Brazil. Now, I don't know if we had to be in South Korea. Because we all know how South Korea did in the World Cup. <laughs> Referees. So we may have lost, but man, a semifinals would have been amazing. Man. A semifinals 2002 would have been absolutely crazy. And then obviously, I also wonder to this day, what if we did make the 2018 World Cup? How would we have done? Because I think that that USA team was the worst. I think that may be one of the worst USA teams um, in the recent years that didn't uh, that obviously didn't make the World Cup. So, yeah, what if we did make the World Cup? Is it better that we actually missed out in the long term? You know, only time will tell. But yeah, those are my biggest what ifs in regards to both those questions. Next up from Cherry Cola Rail says, What does you team football competition do you think would be the most possible to bring back? Um, to be honest with you, I don't think there's any. I don't think there's any. But if I had to pick, if I had to pick, let's just say I had to pick for argument's sake, I'd probably say the Confederations Cup because I think the Confederations Cup is quite easy to bring back. You know, you just have it in a neutral venue, you just have it in the World Cup host, have it. And I think it's fairly straightforward to bring back. But the issue is, I just don't see them doing it because of the fact they're prior to the Club World Cup, they're prior to the new Club World Cup and everything. And, yeah, it's just, it's just a shame, man, because I actually really like the idea. I guess they do have the Finalisma, uh, which is the UEFA uh, team versus the Condable team, but I still feel like you got to have the African team. you got to have the Asian team. you got to have the North American team, you know? It just doesn't hit the same, you know? It just doesn't hit the same. I thought the Confederations Cup was quite a fun little tournament they had, but, unfortunately, I don't think we'll ever see it again. Next question from Prime Barca 7811 says, Do you think this is the start of Madrid downfall? Yeah, Real Madrid have not been great. Real Madrid have not been great so far this season. But here's the thing. Let's not get too out of ourselves. There's still a lot of the seasons to go. And Real Madrid are very capable of still winning trophies. But my question for Real Madrid is, which trophies are they going to win this season? Because I'm sorry. With all due respect, if the Real Madrid win the Club World Cup, uh, uh, Copa del Rey, and the UEFA Super Cup, I still say this season's a good. Because in my opinion, when you buy Kylian Mbappe, who is arguably one of the world's best players right now, you cannot just bring me a Copa del Rey and UEFA Super Club Club World Cup. I need a major trophy. That is the league or the Champions League. And let's be real. I think La Liga is almost done for Real Madrid. I don't think Real Madrid can win it. Even though mathematically they're still in it, I think Barcelona have shown their consistency and how good they have been. And Hansi Flick's did an amazing job. But the goal scoring they've been doing is quite insane. I think it'll be very difficult to win La Liga. For the Champions League, though, it's going to be very interesting because we all know Real Madrid is a team that knows how to win. You can never write them off in the Champions League. And I feel like Real Madrid could come alive, especially in the latter stages, the knockout stage. Because in my personal opinion, I don't think Real Madrid finishes top league. So I think they're going to go through another round. Um, but I think they'll be a force to reckon with in the knockout stage. Because the thing is, Real Madrid are just so difficult to beat. You know? And part of the reason why Real Madrid have been doing so well in the Champions League the last few seasons they've won it is because of the fact they've got individual players that can make a moment out of something. You know, And I think for Mbappe... He has to do something like that in the Champions League. I think for Real Madrid to win the Champions League season, Mbappe and Vinicius both have to be the key guys. Because in my opinion, if it's just Vinicius, I don't think Real Madrid can win the Champions League. Because as much as we give Real Madrid credit last season for winning the Champions League, it wasn't all uh, Vinicius. All the players did their part. Ozil did his part. Tony Cruz did his part. And Nacho Fernandez. And those three players are now gone. And so it'll be interesting to see how Real Madrid do. And will they be able to do back-to-back? -back? Tom will only tell. So... For Prime Barca, man, I would say the league is probably done. 
but the Champions League is still very much alive and they can still win the Champions League. So let's see what happens at the end of the season. Moving to the next question we got here from CBS Football says, what is one significant rule you would add or change to football? For me personally, I've always stated this. I'm going to continue to say this again. I don't like stoppage time. My biggest gripe with stoppage time is that referees are very inconsistent. Referees can either give too much stoppage time or too little, or they don't get there. They don't add enough stoppage time when stoppage time time is wasted in stoppage time. And rather, so in a way to fix all that, I suggest they pause the clock, let the game let pause the clock, and let the game resume after the uh, after the pause is done. So that way, we all know when it ends because football is ninety minutes. We all know for sure when it ends. So. I feel like it's a much easier way to do it rather than have stoppage time. I just think it's very unnecessary. It's very extra, very annoying, and it's it's just too inconsistent, man. So for personally, for me, I I would do that, but you know, I don't think it's ever going to happen. In my personal opinion. Mass Attack Nine says, "What's the worst football take you've ever seen or heard in 2024?" Uh, and then here's because Coco is the biggest club beginning with C. That's also one, but I'm going to name a different one. For me, I've been hearing rumor. I've been hearing people say that Rodri's better than Busquets because Rodri's got more GA. Than which in itself is such a blasphemous. You cannot be using GA to compare which DM is better. This DM at the end of the day is just a center defensive midfielder. Your duty is to do the ball playing. Your duty is to control the tempo of the game and all that. And I'm sorry, if you're using GA to compare, you're just an idiot. GA is a good bonus. It's a good bonus tab. I'm not saying GA is bad. But that can't be the metric used to compare players. So I'm sorry, friend. Anyone that tries to compare... Rodri better than Busquets because oh, look he's got a Ballon d'Or and Busquets didn't and that's a far, that's a far cry because look at the era Busquets was competing he had to compete with Messi and Ronaldo whereas Rodri is competing with Vinicius and Mbappe and you know the, the field isn't the same so I'm sorry man I, it's just absolutely disgrace I don't know why people are actually doing this and it's just recency man recency bias at the best so for me that's the worst football take I've seen or heard in 2004. There's probably some others, but that's the one that stands out to me the most. Steve LFC, this is Anfield says, one, two, three, four, S says, why City choking? The answer is simple, man. City need Rodri. Rodri is one of the most important players. And I think you can see that Rodri is so integral to the City team. He, because without Rodri, City just don't look the same. They are, they're so weak defensively. They're so weak in transition. And Re Manchester City can see so many chances. And I think with Rodri, they don't concede as many chances. So for me, the lack of Rodri is very apparent. And I think that's the reason why City has been underwhelming. Uh, but even without him, guys, I still think City are still one of the favorites for the Champions League and the league title and the Premier League. And so we'll see if City can do it without Rodri. Because I'm saying this right now, man. If City win the league or the, and the Champions League without Rodri, how important is Rodri really? So, And we all know City is usually good at the second half of the season. So City is not that great in the first half usually, but the second half they come alive. So we'll see. How much the Rodri absence will affect them because it's been it's four L's right now for Pep. This is the first time it's ever happened before in his career. Doodle asks, which team do you think produces the best home atmosphere in Europe? That's a good question. I think there's a lot of different answers. There's very it's a very open-ended question, which I like. You know, you can go with Anfield, you can go with the San Siro, you can go with the Dortmund Stadium. There's like so many contenders. Personally, for me, I'm gonna go with the Dortmund Stadium. I think I think Dortmund fans are the most passionate fans in the world. They go through so much for their team. And as much as we clown Dortmund as the club itself, you cannot clown the fans. The fans do show up in their numbers. They get so much support. And I feel like Dortmund is letting the fans down but continuously being underwhelming season, each season, time and time again. So for me, it's the Dortmund Stadium. But I'm hoping uh, there, there's many different answers. There's not a correct answer, obviously. It depends on your personal opinion. Uh, Arusu6478 said, most underrated greats, both individual players and collective teams, all time your opinion. This is a really interesting question. It's a very open ended one. So I came up with three players. Let me know if you guys agree with my three players. So I actually went with Gurgo Hagi. Hagi, I think Hagi is very underrated for Romani. What he did for Romani was amazing. I think Stoikovic is also very good as well. What he did with Bulgaria and Sukar as well. I think what he did for Croatia was amazing. Honorable mentions, I could go with our Mansukic. I think Mansukic is underrated as heck. I would say, um, Roy Keane is also underrated. And yeah, those are probably some honorable mentions. I could probably name some others, but, you know, I'm not going to... I'm just going to name a few just for time's sake. But uh, yeah, let me know what your um, underrated players, Arusu, are in the comments below. So thank you for the question. That's a good question. Half Hope says, which one, is, which is one young player who you believe nobody's talking about that will surprise a lot of people in the future? Guys, there's a player at Lille that I think is amazing. I think his name is Ayubi Ruazi. 
17-year-old youngster, French player, 17 years old. He had a man of the match performance, I think, against Juventus in the Champions League. I thought he was amazing. I haven't heard a lot of people talk about him, and I think he'll be the next big league on talent. And, you know, league on has so, so much young talents coming through, and I think he's a player that people should keep an eye on. And France has so much bet best youth academy players i would i could you could also go with the frankfurt goalkeeper the 21 year old the goalkeeper he's also great there's some other players i can name but you know for time's sake i'll name them but um yeah there's a lot of different ones but for me personally i'm gonna go with ayu who has a yeah uh, center mid stem zero uh fcb cool says win a world cup for bangladesh or barca winning 10 new seals in a row guys it's a difficult because as much as i would love to see barca win 10 champions in a row Bangladesh has never, never won the World Cup. And you know how amazing it would be for Bangladesh if we win the World Cup? Because Bangladesh is football crazy. It's football crazy. Just go to Bangladesh yourself. You'll see how football fanatics they are. Like, they, they, they love football so much. The fans are crazy there, man. It's amazing to see. And I think a World Cup for Bangladesh could do so much good. Not only just for the country itself, but economically as well. Bring the sport as well. And I think it would be such a big moment for Asia as well. Because... Let's be real. I I would assume that no other Asian Asian country has won it by then, and we may be the first country outside of Europe and South America to win it. So for me, I have to go with Bangladesh, man. I have to go with Bangladesh, and I'm always I've always say this, guys. I'm always going to say this right now: country over club. Uh, that's always my preference, and I'm always going to stick with that. So I'm going to go with country over club. But yeah, it's going to. But yeah, bar, ten champions in a row would be crazy too, because that's obviously never happened before. But I'm going to have to go with Bangladesh for this one, man. Next up, it is FB7 Games 253 says, What's your thoughts on the league formats changing tournaments? For example, it happened in the UCL, UEL, and ACL. Now it's good rumor to happen for the UEFA Nations League of Potential Future Qualification Tournaments. Um, personally, I don't think it should happen. I think international home and away is good. Fixtures, I think it's the best way to determine. Because the problem with this new format is that I don't think... I think this is more suited to club football. I don't think this is suited to international whatsoever because the problem with this new format is that you have extra games and i feel like with art this calendar already being scheduled uh, chaotic as it is i don't think there's more games you can add so personally for me i would just keep this a club football uh but maybe for the euro maybe for international it could work but i just don't think it would work i just think there's too many games to schedule too many games in the calendar i don't think this would be sustainable unless they reduce the amount of games which i don't think they would like, the only way I can see this happening is if they maybe reduce the number of games. But I just think the games increase would just not be suitable. And, yeah, I mean, but to be fair, this format's kind of already being used in the, um, what is it called, the CONCACAF. They're kind of already doing it with the Swiss format. But besides CONCACAF, I don't think there's any other federation doing this, to my knowledge, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, thank you for the question, Epi Semi. That's a good one. The Master Painting Poem says, which of the most surprising five teams won in each top five league? Okay, so let's start with the EPL. EPL is Narnia Force. Narnia Force has surprised me so much this season. I didn't know because the guys, I actually predicted the beginning of the season to be relegated. And now they're actually in European competition. They're actually in the top 10. It was crazy. And they might even get a European spot, which is insane. I don't think they will, but if they do, it'll be a crazy achievement. La Liga, I have to say Osasuna. I didn't expect Osasuna to do this well. Osasuna have been amazing. Syria, I would say Napoli. Napoli have caught me by storm. I didn't expect Napoli to do this well. Honorable mentions go to Lazio and Fiorentina. I thought Lazio and Fiorentina would both have bad seasons, but they've been proving me wrong. League on, I would probably say Auxerre. Auxerre has been amazing. They just got their away win at Marseille for crying loud. That's amazing. And I think they beat uh, Rennes 4 0 the other day. So they're actually, and I believe they were like one of the team, newly promoted teams, I believe, if I'm mistaken. So the fact they're actually in the top 10 is actually crazy. They're actually fifth at the time of recording the League on. Uh, then for the Bundesliga, it has to be. Uh, uh, Frankfurt. Frankfurt's been amazing this season. I think Frankfurt's been amazing. Um, Omar Marmouche has been amazing. So, yeah, I would say those teams, respectively, for that. So, thank you for the question, Man City Poet. Good question. Uh, when, when does the old guy says, 3848 says, do you think Ipswich Town will get relegated for the Premier League this season? Unfortunately, yes. Unfortunately, yes. I just don't think they're good enough. I hope they stay up. It would be nice to see, but I just don't think they're good enough to stay, unfortunately. Uh, Brandon Blanco says, do you think with Brazilian teams down with the Copa Libertadores, is the quality getting more boring? Quality getting more and more boring. See, I think I don't think the quality is boring. I just think it's more on. It's just not as exciting. It's not as predict. It's predictable. But the, if you actually go watch some of the matches in a couple of little it's actually quite fun. Like I would say, like the Palmeiras Botafogo game was amazing. Around sixteen, I would say I think the I think Atlético Mineiro versus Flamengo, Fluminense the second leg was crazy. Like the Brazilian teams when they play against each other is really end to end. But the issue is, it's just we have a predictable outcome at the end of the day. Like. The predictability is it's very predictable 
right? Because Brazil teams have dominated. The last time a non-Brazilian team has won the Lefty Awards was 2018. It's six years, man. And yeah, so for me, I'd say it's not really the quality is getting more boring. It's just not as exciting. I think it's probably the better word to say. It's not as less exciting. But if you actually watch the matches, it's actually pretty good. And generally, end to end speaking. Imra Ed four one says, "Do you think Neymar will be forced to retire due to his ACL problems, thigh, hamstring, or knee, just like Sergio Aguero?" Now Aguero retired because of his because of heart issues, so that's actually a bit different, Imra. But um, yeah, Neymar man is tough. I'm not really sure, man. And Neymar's gonna retire. I think if it's like a one or two year injury, then he may have to consider. But I really think Neymar is pushing for the World Cup 2026. I think if Neymar realized that he can't go to the World Cup 2026, then I think he call it. I don't see him playing after 2026. I think 2026 will be his last tournament in football, and I think he's going to do everything he get, takes to make this that World Cup. But we'll see if he makes it or not. So for me, I think if he has like a two-year, like if he's if he's if he has like a heart issues or something like what Aguero did, then yeah, obviously. But I think if it's like ACL, like maybe two years, then maybe you have to consider. But honestly, I'm not sure, man. I'm not sure. Uh, the Shreyo69 says, which player do you like the most who didn't reach the potential? I wish Bordon made the potential. He was such a talented young Barca kid. There was a lot of hype for him, but it just never materialized. Bohan never materialized. And he's probably one of the most disappointed players that didn't perform. Obviously, Freddie Adu is also another one as well. He didn't live up to potential. There was so much hype for him. Uh, the last question from Sammy Keon it says, do you think Iceland become become anytime soon as good as they were for 2040-2018? I don't think so, man. Um, I think Iceland just don't have the same players that they did. I think uh, Sigurdsson, Sigurdsson was so important for that team, and we know what happened to him in a personal life. He just hasn't been the same. And I just think Iceland, just in general, are just like deteriorating. And I think the crucial players doing some stuff off the pitch have affected their national team. And I think the national team is just kind of regressing. But I do think maybe Iceland are kind of starting to kind of rebuild because we did see Iceland did put a decent fight in the Euro qualifiers. Uh, but I don't think they'll be as good as like that 24 2018 when they made the Euro quarterfinals, uh, when they made the World Cup. I don't think we're going to see them. Maybe they'll make the Euros, but I don't think they're going to make a quarterfinals, and I don't think they'll make a World Cup anytime soon. So thank you for the questions, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy this edition. So, guys, we'll do this again for the December time. And, yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy. So please run a like and subscribe, and peace out.